Thank you, Max, and uh, thank you to Leah and Megan for uh, leading us before and Megan for updating us with what's happening in the church events. I, I must admit I did have a little bit of a chuckle as Megan was talking about sending in a video of uh, your father's doing something. Uh, the idea of sending in a video of me water skiing, I, I have water skied a number of times in my life and uh, my wife would testify that I do look somewhat like a submarine emerging from the water as I begin to water ski, so hence the laugh. And I trust that, uh, especially for you kids, that you're able to, to nominate your dads. I'm sure that they would greatly appreciate it. Now, I'm uh, extremely excited this morning because it's, our, it's actually our last sermon in the series of Isaiah. I'm, n- I'm not excited because it's our last one. I'm excited in a sense because I actually think it's one of the best ones. I actually think it's, it's, it's one of the, the most powerful, inspiring passages in the Bible and it'd be fantastic if you had a Bible with you if you could open it up to Isaiah chapter 55 Isaiah chapter 55 and we're going to read that together right now Isaiah 55 invitation to the thirsty come all you who are thirsty Come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labour on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good. And your soul will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear to me and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the people, a ruler and commander of all the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways, and the evil man his thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. My thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy. You will go out in joy. You will go out in joy. You will go out with joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you. And all the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow juniper. Instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign, which will not be destroyed. Thank you so much for all those who shared in that reading. I actually feel like I could stop and hit pause and, and rewind and listen to it again, both uh, being the opportunity to hear different people speak and also to hear those wonderful words of promise. You know, the sitcom Ted Lasso has been one of the surprise TV hits of the past two years. It was nominated for for 20 Emmy Awards. And in fact, though, the, the character Ted Lasso was never intended to be a TV show. It was created by the, the comedian Jason Sudeikis so that to explain English soccer, English Premier League football to Americans. Ted Lasso is irrepressible. In the tradition of Goma Pyle, if you're kind of a, a more mature age person, or Ned Flanders, if you're my age, he kind of even bears more than a passing resemblance to Ned, Ted is a, a college American football coach. 
hired by the recently divorced owner of an English Premier League side, and she hires him to exact revenge on her husband because the soccer club is the only thing that he truly loves. And so she figures if I hire a buffoon of an American, he will destroy the club. It doesn't matter who you are or where you're from, Ted will win you over. He'll win you over with his irrepressible niceness. He can win over the embittered and angry recently divorced owner with his homemade biscuits. He can win over the self-absorbed sporting star. He can win over the the grumpy, I once was a sporting star, but now I'm a has-been. He can win over the insecure, mumbling immigrant just wanting to be accepted. And with his homespun, folksy words and, and genuine love and care for people, he breaks down the cold, hard world that he inhabits. And in the real dark world that we've all been living in for the past 18 months, he's been like a, a spark of joy, a light in that darkness for the world. You see, because it's completely true that we've all been looking for a bit of hope, a bit of light in recent days, haven't we? Uh, You know, all of humanity, all of humanity wants to be inspired to have hope, to have something to look forward to. You know, I read recently how, uh, how many people have been watching reruns of TV shows over this part 18 months, and particularly many people have been watching the drama series The West Wing. The West Wing is a show that follows a president and his team a lead in a, in a way that is inspirational, in a way in which, in which you wish, I wish that could be real life. We all want to be inspired. We all want to have hope. We all want something to look forward to. And so we search. We search and we search. Uh, even let me ask you today, if I was to give you a... Uh, If I was to give you a blank sheet of paper and I was to say to you, can you write down, even if you write down three things, can you write down three things for yourself? What would you want for yourself in this world? Or maybe even just forget yourself, what would the three things that you would write for the world that you could write down? Where would you start? Where would you finish? Where would you go? Oh, maybe you could start with a, a Google search for, for meaning and happiness. And, and let me tell you, that if you do that, you will be swamped with millions of responses. Here's one I found. It's called the Ambition Plan. And it suggests ideas like this. If you want to be happy, content, if you want to, in a sense, envisage the world that you could be a part of, well, you should avoid negative people. You should stop comparison. Set realistic expectations. Accept reality. Pursue your goals, celebrate wins, express gratitude, or take chances. It has a number of different kind of like pithy little statements which are meant to inspire and give you hope in this world. Because we all want to be inspired. We all want to have hope and something to look forward to. And it doesn't matter whether you are the uh, kind of the youthful, energetic, idealistic teenager, or you're kind of the, the grizzled, twice bitten, aging veteran of life. We all want to be inspired. We all want to have hope and something to look forward to. There's a problem. Because if you look at, at how we've done, you might conclude, well, there's not a lot of answers. Our searches, our attempts come up short. In 2021, individuals are as discontent as ever. The world seems to be a mess. I mean, look, we've clearly advanced with technology and science. In fact, there is some good news that on on a number of different measures, we've made progress with global levels of poverty. The millennial goals from the year 2000, we've made progress, we've made a difference. You know, the numbers of people with hunger or homeless who have no education, poor health, we've made progress in them. but, But you know what it's like. You, like me, we, we look around. We, we look around and we still see pain and division. We see this, this rising level of discontentment. Egos run amok. 
power out of control. We see conflict that surrounds us everywhere. People, I, I feel like people are divided more than ever. So where do we look in that? And where do we look in the midst of that, that struggle and that frustration? Do we look inside? Well, inside we remember that we made New Year's resolutions, but they tend to last weeks, not a year. The latest happiness fad is, is tried and, and found wanting. And those personal lives are just marked by discontentment and disgruntlement. It's not even just personal, is it? Our world is in a shambles. Politics seems to be a mess. Seems just to be disappointment. Last week I read an article about Barack Obama written by a, a supporter of Barack Obama bemoaning his recent celebrity filled 60th birthday. The author was wondering when he left the idealistic young man who was going to change the world and then in their mind had sold out. For the author, there was no desire to return to the chaos of Trump. There was just disappointment. Everywhere we look, we see disappointment. We see a military coup in Myanmar. The events, the recent events in Afghanistan with the, with the Taliban overrunning Kabul. And we groan. Inwardly, we just groan. You know, many of us are familiar with the phrase that the grass is greener on the other side. It's a phrase that rings so true, but when we cross over to the other side, we find desert, not lush lawn. And there's this sense of, of disappointment, of wanting more, but not finding it. The nation of Israel at the time of the book of Isaiah had looked for hope and inspiration, but were in a state of despair. They'd experienced the pain of being ripped from their home and then being aimless and lost and wandering. Their cry from Isaiah chapter 6 right at the start was this, Lord, how long will this go on? And that's a cry that you might have. It's a cry that I know that for many people in our world, they have right now. Lord, how long will this go on? But then the prophet Isaiah had delivered a message that had a ray of light that pierced the dark clouds. His message was that a servant of God would come and bring radical change to this world, hoped for change. I asked you earlier what you would write on a blank piece of paper. If you can imagine, if you could imagine what that world would be like. Here's the picture from the prophet Isaiah. He says this servant would bring about a world of justice and righteousness. Righteousness is one of those fancy words, but, words, but essentially means this, that things would be right. He says that he would bring about a covenant, a binding promise between God and humanity, a binding promise of love, not division and hate. He says that the servant would bring comfort, it would bring wisdom and guidance. And not only that, that he would bring that to every single person. Didn't matter what their background was, what their ethnicity was, what their gender was, what their status was in society. This was an invitation for everyone. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that world? That world filled with peace and hope. Surely that's something that is worth hoping for. Surely that is something that might set your heart on fire, that might inspire you. Can you imagine? Well, this is what the servant would do. And Pastor Matt spoke about how it began last week. Not with a click of divine fingers. Not with kind of like rubbing the lamp like a genie and getting her three wishes. No, the beginnings of this new home, this new world, this new relationship began with suffering. The action of the servant was to lay down his life in love. Can you imagine? 
And this is where it ends up in Isaiah 55. Is anyone thirsty? Come and drink. Even if you have no money, come and take your choice of wine or milk. It's all free. Cycle down a few verses. Seek the Lord while you can find him. Call on him now while he is near. What an invitation to come. You know, when I was a university student, I used to work with a friend of mine selling stocks at, at various markets. The Dandenong market, the Caribbean market, you know, the, the Caribbean market doesn't even exist anymore. But these markets were always a hive of activity and noise. People clambering for the best food and goods, salesmen trying to attract customers, noise, noise, noise. And occasionally, someone would kind of like wind the clock back in some sort of retro type way and begin spruiking. You know what a spruker is? Louder and faster, they would call out for people saying, they've got a better deal. Pumpkin, $2 a kilo. Carrots, $2 a kilo. I can't do any more than that. But they were spruiking to invite people to come and take, and well, not take, buy their goods. And that's the voice of verse 1 here. It's the voice of the, of the Near Eastern spruker from the vendors of the markets. This is what they used to say, Come. Is anyone thirsty? Come and drink. This is an invitation from God. Not to come and buy goods, but to come and live. To come to a banquet. This is not a banquet for the special few. Everyone's invited. You don't have to bring your wallet flowing with money out, it's kind of spilling out to buy the goods. No, because everything is paid for by the servant. This is not food that fills your belly for a day, but water that quenches your thirst for life. And the servant invites us all to come, to listen to seek God because this is where your needs will be met. Come and God will be found. You know, every time there is a royal wedding, there's always a fuss about who will be invited and who won't. But this invitation to the kingly banquet surpasses the, the most exclusive royal wedding and what it, what it provides and it's an invitation for you, for me, for everyone. It's an invitation to a new home. It's an invitation to a place where what was broken will be restored, where what has been separated will be reconciled together. It's not a party of leftovers. It has the best of all that life can give, the best that all creation has. It's a new home. Home is the place where we feel, feel most content, the place where we are safest, where belonging is, where we know that we are loved. But Andrew, you might say, many homes are filled with broken promises. Well, not this one, I'm telling you. It's sealed with a covenant. It's sealed with a promise, the binding love of God. Come to me with your ears wide open. Listen and you will find life. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. I will give you all the unfailing love I promised to David. This is, this is the greatest invitation of all. It's the promise of a new world. The transformation that leads to joy and new relationships. It gives peace in a new environment. This is a world unlike anything we have previously known. It's a world transformed. A world that lives out God's glory and love. You will live in joy and peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song. 
The trees of the field will clap their hands. Where once there were thorns, cypress trees will grow. Where nettles grew, myrtles will sprout up. These events will bring great honor to the Lord's name. There will be an everlasting sign of his power and love. This is the promise of God. And it comes with his guarantee. The rain and snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. This is inevitable outcomes. And here's the inevitable outcome. It's the same with the word of God. God sends it out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish what he wants it to. It will prosper everywhere he sends it. This is the promise of a new home and God's guarantee to deliver it. This is a home we all want, we all need. When I asked you early on to imagine, can you imagine this? We all want to be inspired to have hope and something to look forward to. Well, our world imagines something like this, but sadly our world searches and searches so often in the wrong place. We, we place our, our hope and our aspiration in, in things that ultimately leave us wanting more, and it doesn't matter whether it's toys or relationships or success. We always become, become kind of almost caught in this trap of, of looking for grass that's greener on the other side. Why such discontentment? C.S. Lewis summed it up, I think, with incredible accuracy. He said this. He said, If we find ourselves with a desire that nothing in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that we were made for another world. He's saying, if we find ourselves in a situation where everything that we are looking for to satisfy us is failing, we're essentially we're looking in the wrong place. You see, our world, maybe you this morning, today, you need a new story, a place to truly find hope. Well, I want to say to you today that that hope is ultimately found in Jesus. You see, Jesus is the servant king that sacrificially lays down his life. Jesus is the one who brings hope and a new home Jesus is the one who invites us. Come all who are weary and need rest. Jesus invites us to come from wherever we are, whatever corner of the world, from the highways, from the streets, from each nation, from the rich, from the poor, from the gutter. If you've run away from home, it doesn't matter. He says, come home. He invites us to come to the greatest party where the tables are, are groaning because of the food. He invites us to live life to the full. The volume turned up to 11. And Jesus is the one who fulfills these words. Come to me with your ears wide open. Listen and you will find life. Seek the Lord while you can find him. Call on him now while he is near. Let the wicked change their ways. Banish the very thought of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. Yes, turn to our God, for he will forgive generously. You know, some people want to enjoy the party without Jesus. They want Christianity without Christ. But look around and see that all of those attempts have been tried and found wanting. You see, our place of hope, our place of a new hope is only found in Jesus. The one who laid down his life for you and for me. The one who paid that price so there is no cost to join the invite. You know what I'll say to you today? That if you're searching, come home.
come home. I invite you to accept that invitation from Jesus. To come home. The offer is there for everyone. Doesn't matter what your background. Doesn't matter your gender or your ethnicity. Doesn't matter your social status. It's an invitation for you to come home. Come home to a place of love and peace where satisfaction is truly found. And if you know what it is to have come to home, I also want to invite you to to bring others and pass out those invitations to them. For so many people in our world, the picture of a church is a place that forbids. The church is the moral guardian, the place that judges and excludes. I want to say to you that you need to tell people a different story. And the story is of a different world and a different home. It's an invitation to a great party that overflows with food and wine. A place where you live in joy and peace. A place where the mountains and hills burst into song and the trees of the fields clap their hands. That's the message. That's the invitation that you and I have to pass on to people. A place, a better place where life is lived to the full. You see, today... In this summary message, today is the the kind of the accumulation of it all. A message that speaks to our inner longings, our desire for hope and meaning in a despairing, chaotic world. That desire is filled in Jesus and Jesus alone. Jesus, the one who brings about peace and hope and meaning. Jesus, the great teacher, the great welcomer, the powerful one, the healer and reconciler, the compassionate teacher, offering forgiveness, moving us from alienation to community, from death to life, from the old into new. Jesus, God's son, the one who died for our sin and rose again, defeating that sin and death. And he invites us to come home. He invites us to come and share in a world that he is recreating, a world of deliverance and justice, a world of peace and righteousness. He invites us to come home. And I say to you today, will you come home to a world that is beyond your imagination, a world filled with justice, with righteousness, with reconciliation and love. Amen.